Item number SCP-6633. Object Class. Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-6633's effect on the population has been reduced to a point where it is considered relatively minor. As such, containment of the entity has been designated as low priority, with containment efforts being largely diverted towards methods of severity mitigation. Foundation Web Crawler KIER is to monitor police databases for crimes matching previous SCP-6633 manifestations. These records are to be erased and witnesses anesthetized. Foundation contacts within the entertainment industry are to suppress tropes and plots similar to SCP-6633 events to prevent additional manifestations. Description SCP-6633 is a hostile interfictional entity that takes the form of an unknown assailant. SCP-6633's appearance alters slightly between sightings, although it's most often seen as a tall humanoid dressed in a dark trench coat, flight room hat, lacking facial features, and a meat hook in place of a left hand. Unlike other intrafictional entities, the source material of SCP-6633 varies between manifestations, making permanent containment impossible. SCP-6633 operates on a parasitic relationship between itself and the current cultural zeitgeist. Whenever SCP-6633 is present, nearby events will follow those similar to widely believed urban legends. The exact urban legend mimicked varies between sightings, but most follow a rumor popular at the time of the occurrence. Within this narrative, SCP-6633 will take the role of the killer. If a killer is not present in the legend being mimicked, SCP-6633 will alter the antagonist's role to be that of a nameless murderer. Other individuals within this narrative will act in ways that enable SCP-6633 to fulfill this role, resulting in illogical and impulsive actions. As any individual who interacts with the narrative falls under its effects, there is currently no known way to stop SCP-633 once a narrative has begun. SCP-6633 narratives will always end with one or more individuals dead or severely injured, although at least one will survive long enough to recount the events of SCP-6633. This often results in the story of the urban legend becoming more prominent as reports of SCP-6633's attack are spread, and therefore more frequent manifestations. All attempts to trace or otherwise locate SCP-6633 following a narrative event have universally failed. Addendum 6633-1 included below is an abridged list of SCP-6633 manifestations, specifically manifestations where SCP-6633 differed from its source material in an effort to build a psychological profile on the entity. For full list of SCP-6633 manifestations, see document 6633-IV. Date of manifestation, April 13, 1994. Source material and summary, the killer in the back seat. A car is being followed by a large truck down a dark road. The truck begins to flash its high beams into the car, distracting the driver and begins to tailgate them down several roads. As the car's occupant assumes the truck has malicious intentions, it tries to lose the trucker, eventually succeeding in arriving home. When the driver exits the car, they find the rear door open. Another individual unknowingly have stowed away in their back seat. The attempts by the trucker to harm the driver were actually to scare the stowaway and stop them from attacking. Deviations. SCP-6633, rather than attempting to attack the driver, stares straight through the rear windshield at the truck driver while rhythmically tapping on the glass with its metal implement. The trucker's attempts to warn the driver are ignored, although the driver is claimed by the trucker to have never acknowledged SCP-6633's presence, despite it being plainly visible. This continues until the trucker loses sight of the driver after turning onto a path too narrow for the truck to navigate safely. The driver's body is later discovered, having been violently disemboweled immediately after exiting the car. Date of Manifestation 
September 1st, 1999. Source material and summary. The Clown Statue. A teenage babysitter is staying in, within a large house when they enter the guest bedroom to watch the television, where they become unnerved by a life-size clown statue within the room. They later try to fall asleep but continue to feel the presence of the statue. Unable to rest, the babysitter exits the room and calls the parents on a landline phone to complain. The parents inform them that the family possess no statue of that description and to get out of the house. Before they can react, the clown statue, a murderer in disguise, then attacks the babysitter and kills them. Deviations. This remains as the only recorded occurrence of SCP-6633 mimicking this urban legend. Rather than being disguised, SCP-6633 remained dressed in its usual attire, with the babysitter reporting it as a 1900s fisherman statue instead. Rather than react as intended, the parents instead report that they did own a statue of that description and to just cover it in a bedsheet. The corpse is later discovered when they arrive home, having died of exanguination after having its midsection repeatedly pierced by SCP-6633's hook. Large sections of the cadaver skin were removed, having been used as a rope to bind up the victim's limbs. The left hand of the cadaver was torn from the body and remains unrecovered. Exandrination Definition To drain the body of blood Date of Manifestation December 9, 2004 Source Material and Summary The Man Upstairs a teenage babysitter receives a telephone call after putting the children in their care to bed. The call consists of an unknown voice asking them if they've checked on the children. The call is dismissed until the unknown calls dials back repeatedly. The babysitter becoming increasingly frightened. This results in the babysitter calling the police, who trace the calls only to find out they are coming from another phone within the house. They exit the home until the police arrive, who discover the bodies of the children upstairs, having been killed earlier that night. Deviations. The house in which the narrative occurred did not contain young children, with the teenage daughter of the family fulfilling the role of the babysitter. Furthermore, the house was also occupied by the girl's father, who was present in the living room when the calls were received. The man recalls that during the phone conversations, no voice was heard on the other end of the line, only heavy breathing. Despite this, the daughter acted as if SCP-6633 had spoken to her and became increasingly convinced for the safety of non-existent children within the house. The girl gradually became more and more hysterical as the dangers posed the children were in, upon which she ran upstairs and was promptly killed by SCP-6633 in the upstairs bedroom. The body was discovered soon after, with its internal organs removed, to form the outline of small humanoid forms on the bed. Addendum 6633-2 Following widespread prominence of online fact-checking websites and information resources, rates of SCP-6633 manifestations have dropped from its baseline by almost 28%. Researchers have also noted that a number of narratives previously utilized by SCP-6633 have become inactive, with the drop being traced to a public consensus that the legends ha were unrealistic. Based on the discovery, the Department of Film and Media has implemented procedure archetype with the goal of permanently combating SCP-6633's effects. Procedure archetype consists of the suppression and revision of various tropes capable of utilization by SCP-6633. Plot lines containing these tropes are to be rewritten by Foundation contacts within the entertainment industry in order to prevent them from becoming commonplace amongst the general populace. This effort has been focused mainly on genres known to foster such tropes, such as the mystery and horror genres. Following the implementation of Procedure Archetype, SCP-6633's containment team has reported on almost a 6% drop 
and activity from the anomaly, with the majority of previously utilized legends ceasing altogether. Analysis has found that SCP-6633 is more likely to mimic lesser-known local legends, most of which are notably less violent. Based on eyewitness accounts, the actions of SCP-6633 during narrative have been unnoticeably more sluggish, with little to no deviation from the source material occurring. It is currently estimated that, at its current rate, the frequency of SCP-6633 manifestations will drop to nearly 7% of what they are previously. Redestination to Euclid pending approval. Hooray. Addendum 6633-3 On June 19, 2012, SCP-6633's research team was lured to a sudden spike in activity from the anomaly. SCP-6633 was reported to have rapidly initiated several narratives during the night, sometimes in several locations at once. These narratives correlated with a previously unobserved narrative, and all occurred identically across all manifestations. A full transcript of the event has been pieced together through nearby CCTV and security camera footage and included below. 10.48.20 A car of unknown make and model drives into view, stopping abruptly at the side of the road. Inside the car are a male and female. 10.48.50 The car's occupants have a brief conversation, the contents of which are unknown. Of note is the stiff movements of both individuals, with both of their expressions appearing blank. 10.49.19 The two appear to kiss, although upon further inspection, the two merely press their faces together still possessing the same emotionless expression. 10. 54, 53. The male victim exits the car, physically passing through the driver's side door while making the motions of opening it. He then stiffly walks in the rear direction of the car before stopping and intangibly passing into the ground. The female victim stares motionlessly through the windshield and remains in this position for the following two hours. At no point is she observed to blink or breathe. 1254-53, the female victim speaks inaudibly, upon which SCP-6633 enters the frame. SCP-6633 enters the frame rather than walking. SCP-6633 motionlessly slides across the ground towards the passenger side door. SCP-6633 violently scratches against the car's exterior with its hook, while the female reacts in exaggerated horror before passing out. SCP-6633 remains outside of the car and continues repeatedly to scratching the car's exterior. 050600 SCP-6633 vanishes from view. The female victim is observed sitting up and unlocking the door, stepping outside. View of the scene is obscured heavily by camera artifacts and static with the exception of SCP-6633 and the passenger side door. Footage begins to tear, merging the two figures together. 052815 The footage clears. The female victim is nowhere to be seen. The passenger side door has been detached from the car, and now, by fear case, SCP-6633 midsection. SCP-6633 then motionlessly slides sideways until out of view. During post-recovery analysis, it was found that a majority of the victims had been reported missing the night prior and had little to no relation to one another. No bodies were ever recovered from the incidents, and cars recovered from the crime scenes contained no interior mechanical components a then empty stereo casing labeled as Stary and Standard Print. In total, SCP-6633 is believed to have caused over 120 recorded incidents during the spike in activity with an estimated 250 unrecorded cases occurring correlating with missing persons reports. During all ensuing manifestations, SCP-6633 was sighted with the car door still attached around its midsection. 
although no hindrance to SCP-6633's abilities was noted. Further investigation found that anonymous text post had been made the same night, detailing events identical to SCP-6633's actions. Within the following days, SCP-6633 was identified as recreating the events of various other media sourced from the internet, all with a similar scope to SCP-6633 manifestations prior to procedure archetype. A study by the Department of Film and Media has since been released stating that they expect this upward trend of events to reduce over the coming months as interest in online fiction decreases, which they expect to almost, if not completely, subside by the year 2013.